rain. But more than that, he said there'd be no dew. Wow, that is really dry. That is dire. Is there anybody here that is or has been in a dire situation before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, and then in two through four, God told Elijah to go to the brook. He had commanded, ordered ravens uh, to provide for him. Now, the um, chosen has that saying, get used to giving. How ordinary is it for a raven to come and feed you bread and meat in the morning and in the afternoon? I mean, would that have been ever something you would have even imagined could happen? But God, but mm -hmm. God. So in Christ, our steps are ordered. Because what happened was Elijah, um, God ordered those uh, ravens to do that. Yes. And um, I have a saying that I tell people. I say, follow me around, and you will see a God who truly orders steps. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's absolutely amazing to me how God orders my steps. And, and I know I was talking to Michelle. And at times, when you look back, you see, well, that happened because of this, and this, and this, and this. And so, you know, there truly is a God that orders steps. So, I remember in verse 5, so he went. What is that? Obedience. Obedience. Mm -hmm. uh, when um, Brenda alluded to the fact that maybe the theme throughout this was obedience, uh, Jean and I just kind of chuckled at each other <laughs> because really that's what God wants, our obedience. Mm -hmm. our obedience. Yes. So, what happened is the ravens came and they fed him, and again I'm going to say get used Has to depend, he can't just depend on one source or one way. Mm -hmm. Even prophets have to depend on God in supernatural ways, you know. And so, what what does God tell him? That there's a widow that uh, he has now ordered to provide for him. A widow with no resources whatsoever. So, here's another get used to difference. Because who would imagine that a widow that is going and preparing to die is going to be able to provide for you. So the widow had a palm full of flour and a little oil. And when I was really reading this, I really want us to imagine this, okay? Take your hand. Take your hand. This right here is all the flour that she had. A palm full. This was it. But you know, what's that saying? A guy much in the master's hand, or little is much in the master's hand. Okay. <clears throat> so she was she was in a desperate situation. She was going to make her bread uh, for her son, and she and then they were going to die. Okay. But what did Elijah say to her? Do not fear. Go and do. You know, God saith the Lord. So when she couldn't be moved by fear. She may have battled fear. Do you ever battle fear, but go ahead and do it anyway? Mm -hmm. yes. But she decided to trust and obey. If we can't trust God, who can we trust? What can we trust? So if God tells us to do something, obey. Obey. Elijah <coughs> said, make one for me first. And as I alluded last night, that goes so against a mother's heart. You know, what are we what are we to do? Well, we are responsible to provide for our children, right? And so with that provision, if you've all got a handful of flour, uh, you know, to make something for somebody else first really is an act of faith, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know? So not, and I, I heard a saying years ago, and it really stuck with me. It says, nothing leaves God's hand to you until first something leaves your hand to God. Okay? Nothing but this give, and it shall be given unto you. You don't even get salvation until you come to him. You have to come to him. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if you open the door, I will come in. So, you know, 
give something in order to receive. Okay? So she went and she did. Here we go. Obedience again. She went and she did. And she and her household ate for many, many days. Now I have some uh, scripture cards that are going to be handed out. Wait for everybody to get one. Thank you. I'm big on putting scripture cards everywhere. <laughs> you know, because you got to remind yourself of the Word of God. <laughs> so it says she and her household ate for many days, okay? Because what did I say? If nothing leaves God's hand to you until something first leaves your hand to God. So what she did is she gave. And so what I'd like to do is all of us read this together because this is the result of giving. Okay? Give, yeah. and, it and it will be, be given, given to you. you. Good, Good measure, measure pressed down, down shaken together, together, running over. They, they will pour into your lap, for by your standard of measure, measure it, it will be measured to you in return. return. Luke 6, 38. And who said that? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus said that. Now, we, uh, my husband and I, have a testimony about um, how God provided for us. When we were in Bible school, we had everything set. We had renters that were renting our homes, and we were going to go down to Bible school, and that money was going to get us through. Well, the renters never paid a penny. Not only that, but they and all, and so there literally was a time where we had two dollars and sixty cents to our name. Literally, that's what we had. And uh, we were at a ministry assignment thirty miles away from our school. And um, so my husband was called to lead worship in this in this church. It was interesting because one half of the church was charismatic and the other half was not. And so every time he led a uh, all the people that weren't charismatic, they were literally sat on both sides, okay? So the people that weren't charismatic would sit there and sit there with the hymns and be very happy. But when he'd lead a worship, a worship chorus, all the people that were, uh, you know, <laughs> so, so he was, you know, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting. It was weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so we had $2.60 and they had an offer. That we wouldn't give two dollars of that offering, and my hubby was sitting up front in at the front. And so after the service was over, I said, I asked him, you know, I really feel like we should be giving two dollars of this. And he's like, Yeah, God prompted me too. So what we did is we put that two dollars in the offering, and all. Uh, and uh, we were we went to a school of faith, and you know they really were teaching us to trust God. All. And so we uh, put that two dollars in there, and then we were like thirty miles from our school and low on gas. So we stopped at the gas station, and he went in. You know, it's pay before you pump, and so he brings in sixty cents, and the guy goes, "Hard times, huh?" <laughs> so, but um, we got back to our our uh, campsite because we were living in a camper at that time, and all. Uh, and not long after that, there was a knock on the door. And it was a fellow student that had been blessed in another ministry. Like times so much that we ended up having like a love feed for the students that were in the um, the area there. But then later that night, uh, we had a bunch of Kenyan uh, boxes and all. So we boxed those up and we went to another camp, um, student's house that we knew was really struggling and we left them there. But we didn't even get back to our camper before somebody else was offering us something. Mm -hmm. And what we found was. Blessings than we could have even ever imagined giving that to them 
And so what, what it did is it, it really taught us that if God instructs you in something to do, be willing to do it because he will pour out press down, Satan the desert, running over it, with pouring to your bosom, you know? And um, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about George Mueller. George Mueller was a man back in um, World War II, I think it was, um, that had, uh, let me just read this, okay? Amongst the greatest monuments of what can be accomplished through simple faith in God are the great orphanages covering 13 acres of ground on Ashley Downs, Bristol, England. When God put it into the heart of George Mueller to build these orphanages, he only had two shillings. Kind of uh, re relate to this in any way, Phyllis here. <laughs> Without making his no wants known to any man but to God alone, over a million four hundred thousand dollars were sent to him for the building and maintaining of these orphan homes. When the writer first visited them near the time of Mr. Mueller's death, there were five immense buildings of solid granite capable of accommodating two thousand orphans. In all the arrived, the Lord had sent food in due time so that they never missed a meal for want of food. And then there was this particular uh, instance where they were all sitting at the breakfast table, because all these orphans depended on you, and uh, uh, they had no, no food at all. And so what they did is they joined hands and thanked God for the food, and there was a knock on the door, and there was a man that was a baker that had, God had woke him up in the middle of the night and he baked the bread and brought it to the children right at that moment. Mm -hmm. Then, not long after that, there's another knock on the door and it is the milkman's cart broke down right in front of the uh, orphanage and so these children had fresh bread and milk. In, in direct response to praying and thanking God for the food that they didn't even have. That's right. Jesus and Peter, when he needed tax money, what did he, how did he get tax money? They were fish in the, the mouth of the fish. So God's ways are so much greater than ours. Yes. So um, almost 200 years later, the George Mueller Charitable Trust in Bristol still operates today and continues to adhere to George's commitment to seeking money only through prayer. Tens of thousands of souls, orphans, and other needy children and the elderly have been helped. As George reminds us, every child of God is not called by the Lord to establish schools and orphan houses and to trust God, the Lord, in the means there. Yet there is no reason why we may not experience far more abundantly than we do now. His willingness to answer the prayers of his children. And that was some of God's most nice things. So do you want to trust God more? Yes. I do. Be willing to, for God to stretch your faith. I don't want to be normal. I want yes. to trust God. I want yes. to be different. Yes. You know? Also, yes. in Jesus, um, uh, the uh, chosen series that's going on right now, you had the Pharisees, you had the religious leaders, and you had Jesus come in and he was so different. And they were blinded to I don't want to be blind mm. either. Yes. I really, I want my eyes open. I want to, to trust God for different. I want to um, stretch, I think. Expect different. I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. You know? Yes. Expect different. Embrace different. Ask God to help you to be different. Be open to different. We're not of this world, are we? You know, so be willing to give when ordered by God. And okay, we have a, a little 
Take them up really. Okay, so you just call out the number. Two five seven six six seven two. Shut your mouth up. <laughs> <laughs> I just told her that I never win. <laughs> get, get used to this. Yeah. <laughs> Eight 